Today I will show you how I made these wiggly eyed gift bags. The bag is online because I wanted to keep it simple and it was a lot easier to place the eyes after assembly. I used some interesting tools. This is a thermometer and an awl, but more on that later. Cotton fabric, lots and lots of googly eyes. These are 18 millimeter, three millimeter braided cotton cord. Then I used some cardboard from an old packaging to create a template, added markings to the corners, and started cutting the fabric. I had some fabric where the edge wasn't on grain or straight, so I pulled a few threads to make sure I could cut on grain. I cut the fabric and into my template, but let's pretend that didn't happen, okay? Just don't be like me. Then I made small snips at the top and made a slightly larger snip on the side at the bottom marking. It should be about six millimeters or a quarter inch. The snips make it easier for me to fold and press the corners. This fabric doesn't have a wrong side, so I just picked a side and stuck to it and proceeded to fold the four corners towards the wrong side of the fabric. You gotta fold twice so that the raw edge is encased. Next, whilst working on the wrong side of the fabric, I sewed close to the folded edge. I repeated the step for all four corners, so the bag now looks like this. And then I folded the seam allowance towards the wrong side of the bag. The first fold is one centimeter or three eighths of an inch. The next fold is one and a half centimeters or five eighths of an inch. And I'm doing it now so that I have good access and it's easier to press at this stage. To sew the first pass of the French seam, I fold the bag in half with the right side out. This is super important for French seams. So wrong sides are facing each other and the right side of the bag is on the outside. The top and the little corner should line up. I sew the line of stitches one centimeter or three eighths of an inch from the edge. I started at the top all the way to the fold. Then I trimmed the seam allowance by half. You don't have to measure, you can just eyeball it. When I trimmed and sewed both sides, I pressed the seam allowance to one side. This will help folding the bag exactly on the seam, which is very important for a good looking French seam. So working on the wrong side of the bag, I marked the seam line, so it's easier for me to follow on the sewing machine. It's especially useful at the top. I forgot to film the sewing and I went right on to closing the tunnel, but you can see the stitches a little bit later. Close the tunnel, again I worked on the wrong side of the bag and sewed all around the edge of the tunnel. I like to trim the thread tails as I go. Working on the right side or the outside of the bag, I gave the bag another press so I could see the bottom crease really clearly and I would be able to line it up with the side seam for the box corners. Once they were aligned, I marked two centimeters on each side of the seam. I stitched through and trimmed the edge. I repeated the step on the other side and then to finish the box corners I pressed them, 
Mark the seam one centimeter from the edge and stitched through both corners. The bag was now ready for the rope, but in hindsight it would have been easier if I pressed the crease into the center of the front of the bag before moving on. This would have been easier for placing the wiggly eyes later on. I measured the rope for one side and doubled it and then pulled the rope through the tunnel in opposite directions. And then I used a ball of yarn as temporary filling to make it a little bit easier to find a good spot for the eyes. I marked where I thought I wanted the eyes and then corrected it to be more centered and on the same level because <laughs> my first markings were really crooked, but they were a good starting point. I pressed a center crease into the bag, but it was a little bit fiddly because the rope was already attached and everything. I put a marking in at two centimeters for the eyes, but you can do whatever you want. I tried different distances and different placements for different bags. The idea of an awl is that it pushes aside the threads in the fabric instead of cutting into them and weakening the fabric. But the ones that I have are not really made for the job. But you know, that's what I had lying around and I don't want to buy even more tools. It did end up working though. However, because the threads are still intact, the hole wants to close back up if you move it around too much. Sometimes it wouldn't work to wiggle the eye in, so I would just use the thermometer again and reopen the gap. So a slightly bigger hole would have been a lot easier, but with some wiggling I got the eyes in without breaking them, and snapping on the back was easy after that. A lining would give them some more body, but who knows, I might try that next. Let me know if you would like me to do a lined version in the comments. Oh, and don't worry about the blue markings. It's a water-soluble pen, and I went back in and cleaned it up. I love the end result, and I think they're really cute. So I'm making these for my nieces who are turning seven this weekend and I hope they like them just as much as I do.